Okay, and now we need to identify which graph is which. And the first important thing, therefore, is to always identify what type of graph and what unit we have here. So let me go ahead and take it one by one. I'm going to start with the normal force graph and I'm going to indicate this with a normal force and I'm going to state that it is in Newton in this case. So let's be clear here because this could be confusing right now because we have NN but this stands for normal force in the circle and then in the square bracket is the unit. All right, and now let's zoom in on that particular graph and let's actually understand what we're trying to graph here. So remember that we talked about the dashed fiber here on the bottom, which indicates that this is a rigid body and which indicates that this is technically the bottom of the beam. So what that really indicates to me is that there's a positive x and a positive y direction. And in these graphs, you will never see this later, but because it's the first time we're doing this, I want to introduce this to you. So I know that x is usually going in this direction and x is in the unit of meters because I want to graph the specific values everywhere along x. And the entire beam here is four plus one plus two meters long. And so this point here would be x equal to 7, this would be x equal to 4, x equal to 5, and so on and so forth. And the other thing that this reference fiber tells me is that there is a positive and a negative side. And I mentioned this to you before and you got away without really making use of this, but from now on you need to memorize that the reference fiber is always on the negative side of the graph and the non-referenced fiber portion is in the positive direction. So the way I will indicate this to you purely for educational purposes, because nobody does this in real life, but the way I will indicate this is by showing you that here we have a positive Y value usually, and here we have a negative Y value. But keep in mind that this is actually the normal force. And so this is in Newtons, in the unit of Newtons. Again, you will never see this later on, but for your education, this might be helpful. So what I'm trying to tell you is we have an X, Y graph, which mathematically looks normal. And you may wonder, why do I emphasize this so much? I'm emphasizing this because the reason this is a normal mathematical graph with X and Y is because we have the reference fiber on the bottom. If the reference fiber was on the top, we would actually look at a Y axis pointing positive downwards and an X axis pointing positive to the left. But for our first example, for an educational introduction to these diagrams, that's obviously not something we need to worry about. We're just going to stick with the regular XY coordinate system. And our goal now is to actually graph the values that we determined. And remember that we determined the value here at 4.99999 meter. No, sorry, 3.999 meters at 4.00001 and then at 4.99999 and at 5.00001. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. And so, of course, later on, we're just going to call it left, right, four to the left, four to the right. But so that you clearly understand what we're talking about, let's now graph these values. And the way I prefer to do this is I'm going to go on my vertical lines now and remember that the value that I calculated at this location to the left of this vertical line was given with, if I'm not mistaken, negative and the negative is very important, obviously, now 43.3 Newton. And the next value that we determined is on the opposite end of that line. So that, of course, was also negative 43.3. And then we had another value that also turned out to be negative 43.3. And we had a value of zero. So now we know those values and the question is, how do we graph them now? So I guess it's actually not that difficult if you really look at it and think of it as a mathematical graph and you have the values here. But often in the classroom, I see students being confused with that. So let's clarify that here, for example, we have a value of plus 20 and then here we have plus 40. Here we have negative 20 and then here we have negative 40, let's say. And so my goal now is to actually use this graph to 
bring down my values and let's start with the first one at 43 that let's say would be somewhere here and then the next one would be there and here we would have one and then here we have the zero so now the question is can we extrapolate our understanding and can we now actually predict what the value would be at x equals to let's say three meters so somewhere right here would we know what the value is at x equals to two meters and so on and so forth and when you look at this picture and you really think about it you probably can do that because you have the 43.3 here and remember what we did last time we actually made a cut that encompassed all this portion here and we then calculated the internal forces and if you look at that formula please understand that the lengths here the four actually didn't play a big role for that particular part this is very unique in this case right so it's particular to this case so don't extrapolate that understanding but what you can say is that hey if i would have cut the system here or here or here or here or here or here it would always come out to be 43.3 negative and why negative by the way because remember that the negative means that the member is in compression so you push with 43 here from the left and you balance it here on the right because the horizontal component of the 50 with the angle of 30 leads to a component of 43.3 and so in other words the beam is completely in equilibrium between point a and this force and here everything has to remain zero because there's a roller here and the roller is pretty much pulled to the left and because it doesn't resist the pull it is free to move it has a degree of freedom in that direction there can be no force activated in here so think about what force is force is really a resistance to deformation and so this here really resists the deformation whereas this one doesn't it can actually move with it so it's zero and therefore i can now extrapolate my understanding and really draw the values everywhere along the x-axis so for example if i wanted to know how much it is at one meter i would probably say hey it's also minus 43.3 at two meters the same and so on and so forth i can do that everywhere along the line and again when i move to the right here i would actually say it's zero here zero here zero here but of course we want to show this continuously and not at each individual point so what we do is we actually draw a line and in this case you can see it's a constant or a horizontal line and that needs to now jump back to zero and that happens right here because of the force that is acting there in the horizontal direction and then here it's all zero and of course i have to indicate that it's zero here in fact let's talk about the zero at x equals to zero so at the very left point of the structure there must be a f force of zero technically and then the 43.3 comes in and then it pushes it up so in other words my normal force diagram has to start at zero and then go to the negative 43 and now it's a com almost a complete normal force diagram i have to indicate the area that is really of relevance here and the way i do that is by indicating first of all that it's in a negative region and second of all i have to shade the area and i also of course have to indicate that it's zero here so i cannot just leave this blank this would just mean that i didn't know if it was zero or not but this now is a complete normal force diagram which has the identifier it has the unit it has the area that is in compression it has the values and it is complete therefore so now last thing like what you probably would do later in real life instead of writing the values up here all the time although this is very helpful for uh, beginning engineers but later on you probably would see it with 43.3 negative in that direction and i invite you to really think about what this means so this here is negative because this part is in compression and that's important to understand so if you really internalize that you can easily draw these graphs later on because you will be able to see where a member is in compression like here or where it is in tension and so on and so forth but this will come through practice this of course is our very first example